Hello and welcome to another video. My name is Over the Giant Tree and I've just watched Star Wars Episode 9, The Rise of Skywalker. And I just want to let you guys know my thoughts on the film as soon as I've watched it. I've just gotten in. I think the film was awkwardly paced. At times I thought the film was going too fast and then at times I thought it was going at a decent pace, you know. For example, the start of the film is very quick. It's very quick to Kylo Ren finding Palpatine. I thought they could have brought that up more. You know, Palpatine is this now mythical figure in the Star Wars universe at the time of this film. And yet they just rushed to him like, oh, here he is. He's just chilling. I did not like the way they handled that, personally. But it does introduce the massive fleet we've been seeing in the trailers, which I thought was fucking cool. You know, shit tons of Star Destroyers with these fucking planet destroying cannons. Holy shit. That was amazing. You did a really good job there, Star Wars team. I I really like that. That was probably my favourite part of the film, if I'm being honest with you. Now, Kylo Ren, he is my he's probably my favourite character of the new trilogy. Now originally it was Rey back in episode seven. I really enjoyed episode seven when I first saw it. Even though it was, you know, it had rehashed parts of episode four. I just loved the fact that it was a fresh new take on Star Wars. Then episode 8 happened, and I didn't really like that. And now episode 9's here, and you know what? It's, it's alright, you know? It's a good film. I'm saying it now, it's a good film. But there are some bits I didn't like, obviously. So, Ray. Ray Palpatine. Yeah, you've seen the film if you're watching this video, or you don't plan on seeing the film, and then you don't mind being spoiled, but Ray is a Palpatine. I'm just letting that sit for a second. Firstly, I want to know who Palpatine shagged in order to create his son. And yeah, that that's something I'd like to know. Who's Rey's grandmother? Because the Emperor's her grandfather, not her father, her grandfather. And the way they were saying it up, it seems like, this doesn't quite make sense, but her parents do look a lot like Uncle Owen and Aunt Beru, who took care of Luke when he was on uh, Tatooine. Now, they might just be people who look similar, you know? They might not be the same person at all. But they do look quite alike, so there is that. And then at the end, she goes to Luke's old house and buries their lights, buries Luke and Leia's lightsabers there, which was also very strange. If there wasn't a link between the two, but it is what it is. I'll come back to that because I have a few more irks about that. But yeah, Leia has a lightsaber as well. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Obviously, she's a Jedi, and we do see a bit of her and Luke training, which I thought was a nice touch. I really enjoyed that. Uh, the, obviously the massive fleet we saw, that was very epic. We saw the uh, Phantom and the Ghost crew. Well, we didn't see the Ghost crew, but we saw the Ghost a fair bit, so that was nice. I was always looking out for it when there was like a wide space shot. I was always looking, is, is the Ghost there? Is the Ghost there? And we did see it a couple times, so that was very epic. They go to this desert planet, I can't remember the name, and there's a festival going on. We've seen the festival in the trailers. They go there to find this the Jedi Hunter guy who Luke and Lando were, look were looking for, because that's where we meet Lando. We meet him on this desert planet. You know, he's just chilling in, like, a tr just moving tread. It wasn't like a it wasn't like a sand crawler. It was just, like, literally a moving tread, like a World War One tank sort of meme. So that was interesting. Um, then you meet Lando, and then he's like, yeah, me and Luke were looking for this Jedi killer man. So he leads them to the ship and all that. But then they all sink into like this gravel pit, and that's where and and apparently Luke and Lando were like, oh, he he vanished without a trace. But there's clearly like a a, a sinkhole gravel pit just chilling right next to the ship. So it's kind of like, bro, could you not put two and two together? Yeah, and that's where they find the dead Jedi hunter, and then they find a Sith dagger with uh, the 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 exact the exact pinpoint location of. A Sith Wayfinder, which is like a Sith Holocron. It just shows you to wait to the Sith home, the new Sith homeworld, not Korriban. Uh, I forget the name. It begins with E. It just shows you the way there. And there's only two in, two in existence for some reason. And Kylo Ren has one. And that's how he found Palpatine at the beginning of the film. That bit annoyed me. Because it was so quick. Also, Palpatine in this film, he looks better towards the end. At the beginning, did not like his design. But when he steals the life force from Kylo and Rey, he looks better, I ironically. So yeah. Also, he creates Snoke, and he has loads of Snokes in test tubes. It's all weird, very weird. We uh, we see bits of the Knights of Ren. The Knights of Ren did stuff. 
We didn't really get their origins, but they did stuff, you know, that's pretty pretty alright. I'm not a fan of the Disney Star Wars movie. I'm not well I am a fan. But I'm not like a big fan of how the the force in them. Because it's so weird, right? So there's a scene. This is like towards the big climax of the movie, right? And so Ray is talking to her grandfather, the Emperor Palpatine, and he's like, if you kill me, my essence will transfer over to you and you'll become Empress Ray and all that, Empress to the Sith Empire, which I thought was fucking cool. And we actually do see Dark Side Ray, although it was just a vision, as I anticipated. I wish, I wish we got Dark Side Ray. I wish Ray had cut down the Emperor and then become Dark Side Ray, and then it was up to Kylo to turn her back to the light. That's what I would have loved to have seen. But no. Darkside Ray is just like a like a, a vision. She fights the normal Ray. She does like a, a hissy thing, and uh, Ray's like, "Oh shit!" When she finds the uh, Wayfinder on the Death Star planet, whatever it's called, the Moon of Endor, whatever. Well, yeah. So she finds the uh, Wayfinder, and then Dark Ray attacks her, and then Kylo Ren crushes the other Wayfinder, and he's like, "No!" And then they have a big fight. Love Kylo Ren. He's he's a pretty good duelist. Not gonna lie. But then at the end of it, Ray steals his TIE fighter after healing. So Princess Leia reaches out in the Force, says Ben, so he doesn't kill Ray, because he was about to kill Ray, right? And then Ray takes this opportunity, grabs his lightsaber, fucking stabs him. Then she hears Leia. Leia fucking dies. So Ray heals Kylo, fucking zooms off in his TIE fighter. And then Kylo's just being edgy, looking over the uh, the ocean. Fucking Han Solo appears out of nowhere. They have a little heart to heart like they did on the bridge in episode 7. You think he's going to do the stabby thing again, but he doesn't. He renounces his Kylo Ren and uh, becomes Ben Solo again. Although he's a bit conflicted at right now, but in, at the end of the day he becomes Ben Solo. He fucking yeets his lightsaber into the ocean. In hindsight, wasn't the best of ideas if you're going back to the Sith homeworld to rescue Rey and you don't have a lightsaber. This is where the weird use of the Force comes in, right? So Rey has two lightsabers. She has Lu- Anakin, Luke's... Well, she has Anakin's lightsaber and she has Leia's lightsaber, okay? So she's currently using Anakin's lightsaber. So she she's about to, you know, slice down the Emperor, complete the ritual. She goes like this. And then she's connected with Kylo Ren in the Force. So when she does this, the lightsaber actually transfers to Kylo Ren who fucking pulls it out to fight the Knights of Ren. I'm like, what the fuck? When when has that ever been a thing that could happen in the Force? But it's because these two are connected, you know, a Palpatine and a Skywalker or whatever, or a Solo, whatever. Uh, you know, the Rebel ragtag fleet, you know, they defeat all these Star Destroyers because for some fucking reason, right, the Sith homeworld is full of magnetic flux and gravity wells and all that shit, which means the the, the cruisers... Cannot fucking take out of the pla- take off out of the planet without these fucking control mast things. You'd have thought you'd have made a fleet on a planet where they could actually leave with ease instead of needing like this fucking arbitrary command tower, an easy fucking thing to attack if your fleet gets attacked. Oh yeah, also Hux is a spy and then gets fucking murdered. Just thought I'd like just gonna slip that in there. Okay, so. They go for one control tower, right? The rebels are like, oh shit, we found it. Raise led us to it. Kind of like a little trap meme because all the fucking Star Destroyers just start yeeting, just shooting the fuck out of them. They're like, oh shit, they've got guns. Oh fuck, all these Star Destroyers are actually armed. They each have a planet destroying weapon, so it's a pretty OP fleet, right? But for some fucking reason, they're on a planet that they can't take off without the use of this arbitrary control mast. So then fucking Admiral Pride, or whatever his name is, General Pride, twice the pride, double the fall, he fucking could uh, transfer control to the to our ship, which is the main control ship. You know, it's pretty obvious it's the main control ship. It's fucking bigger than all of the rest. It's got a fucking control tower on it. And then I, so it's like, oh shit, the thing's been disabled. Oh, it's, the fucking, it's the fucking big ship. And then fucking... Emperor Palpatine steals the life force of Ben Solo and Rey, you know, grows his fingers back, and then he's like, oh shit, look at all this power I've got. I am the one true emperor. All the Sith live through me. Fucking bzzzed the sky, you know, 
knocks out all the um, rebel ships. They're like, oh shit, my power's gone. Oh no, we're falling. Yeah. And then Ray's like, yo. Ray wakes up at this point because, you know, she's been knocked out by the old, uh, the old force drain. And she's like, oh my god. She's looking up. She fucking, she fucking gets up. You've got this amazing scene of her just reconnecting with her Jedi roots. You hear Mace Windu. You hear Obi-Wan Kenobi's. You hear Anakin Skalker. You hear Ahsoka Tano. You hear Yoda. You hear Kanan. So many Jedi just telling her to, like, get up, rise, you know, power through. You are a Jedi. You may be Palpatine, but you are a Jedi. Rise. And she rises up. She takes the lightsaber. She gets the lightning. And then she takes out another lightsaber, crosses them, just fucking yeets Palpatine. Palpatine fucking dies in a massive explosion. It was, it was an all right film, you know. There were some very good parts. And when the film was very good, it was very good. It was better than episode eight. Definitely. I'm unsure whether it's topped episode seven. I'd say it has because it's fucking, it's a fucking good film, right? But at the same time, there are some bits where I was like, eh, the ending. Oh my God. The fucking ending of the film, right? Holy shit. So after all the celebration scenes, you know, there's the whole celebration scene on uh, the fucking forest planet they're on, you know, everyone's like, whoa, we did it. We killed the final order away. Yep. That was their name, by the way, the final order. So like, whoa, we did it. Yeah. Ray goes back to Tatooine. The end of the saga is also the beginning of episode 4, I believe. Well, not the exact beginning, but close to the beginning, right? She goes back to Luke's old home. Obviously, it's covered in sand by now. The charred skeletons, they've long gone. And she's like, oh, shit. So she make, she pulls up this sheet of metal and she slides down the sand like she did on Jakku, right? And she's just looking around the house like, yo... This is a house. And then she gets back out and she she takes Luke and Leia's lightsaber, or Anakin and Leia's lightsaber, folds them up to cloth and buries them beneath the sand. And then this random... And she, she, she's made her own lightsaber at this point, right? So she took the top of her saber staff and turned it into a lightsaber. I think it was green. It looked green to me, but I, I don't have the best perception of colour. So it could have been yellow or orange. So she has a new lightsaber and it's actually, instead of like a button, it's like a you slide it which is pretty cool. I wanted it to be a saber staff, but she did use pieces of her staff to make it, so that's kind of that wish fulfilled, I guess. Anyway, she she has a new lightsaber, and there's this random old-ass, this old-ass woman, right? With, um, like, those, you know, those long-legged, like, camel things they have in Star Wars that I think Obi-Wan rode in on when he dropped off Luke? She comes in one of them, and she's like, no one's been here in, in years. What's your name? And she's like, Ray. And then she looks off into the distance, sees the ghost of Luke and Leia, turns back and goes, Ray Skywalker. You're not a fucking Skywalker, lass. You're a Palpatine, right? I know that name has negative connotations, right? But you're definitely not a fucking Skywalker, right? I would have liked Kylo to have been, you know, evil through and through, but he wasn't, and that's okay, you know? He he redeemed himself, became one with the Force. Big up Kylo, my favourite character. Also, because I went to see the premiere, we got, like, these trading cards, right? So, you, you... They left them unattended, right? So, if there was an attendant there, you'd usually, you know, get, like, one. Well, they were unattended, and there was a massive box, so I picked up a few. Um, I'm just going to open them for you. They've got a nice, nice little Kylo Ren face on them. Fadath Devonspawn. This man's right here. This horseman. Kai Thren Threnali. Be a hero, and then it's got all the droids. You've got, you've got Dio the fucking hair dryer, BB-8, and C-3PO. C-3PO was class in this film. He he wasn't able to translate Sith, the magical fucking MacGuffin in this film, the Sith Wayfinder. The locations on it were on the dagger, but it was written in Sith. So C-3PO could translate it, but he couldn't say it because of some fucking block put in his programming. He was not allowed to translate Sith, apparently. So they had to go f pad out the movie a bit to go find uh, Droid Smith or whatever. And then our final card is lovely little Kylo Ren boy there. Love him. Supreme Leader Kylo. So yeah, that's my thoughts on Star Wars Episode 9. I just wanted to make this video because I wanted to get my thoughts out there. And if any of you have seen the film, what did you think of it? Tell me down below. I'd love to hear your ideas. 
And yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Peace. Hey, oh, uh, uh, I've been up for like two hours. Two hours. Yo, bitch can food took a few showers. Few showers. I don't buy, I just money dance. Yeah. That wristwatch costs a hundred grand.